Welcome to Echo Sunday Service. We are kicking off a brand new series today called Essentials, Back to Basics. If you're new, here is a little of what to expect. We start with our amazing Echo Band, Pastor Andy will speak and we'll wrap up with a time of response. One of Echo's core values is to live generously, to live with open hands. In Luke 12, it says, sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If you're looking to live with open hands today, you can do so in a couple different ways. You can head to our website, you can use the Church Center app, or you can text any amount to 84321. Thanks for joining us and being a part of the Echo family, and we hope you enjoy Echo Sunday service. This is the part where I plug in my guitar. Never done that in front of an audience. That's, that's great. That's good. Hey, we're excited to worship with you guys this morning. This is good to be together. Man, it feels good. It's nothing like ending a week with worship together just to, just to get out of the ordinary, right? To do something that we don't do the rest of the week, which is, which is close our eyes, to be present, to be here with God, to, to tell God how grateful we are for him, how much we love him. It's just such a good, such a good, good thing to do with you all. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah. 
all that we are, we're coming after you. We lay our hearts before you, God. Today we choose to focus on you, God. Though we're weak, though we're dry, God, here we are all our lives. We choose to come after you, God. Before the band leaves today, Many of you know we're starting a brand new series called Essentials. Just getting back to the basics. And I don't want to miss this moment where we just strip everything away and we just honor God. I'm a person that believes in prayer. I'm a person that believes in the power of God. I'm a, I believe that Jesus is calling us to the table today. And he wants us to bring what we have. What we've done so far is played a little karaoke this morning, which I love. As Cordy was singing this song, I'm coming after you. Are we? I want to. I wonder if we can do that today. This is new to some of you. For some of you, you just haven't done it for a while. Just wherever you're sitting, will you just begin to pray? Will you close your eyes? Today, would you bow your head? Will you raise your hands? Some of you may need to kneel, but can we just make this a place of prayer today? God, we don't want to move beyond where you are. So today, God, all across this room, we make our own little personal yet collective prayer location, our prayer tent. And today we come bend at knees. We strip away everything else that we're worried and concerned about. And we're putting our mind and our heart on you. God, may our life be a living sacrifice of praise. Come on, church, wherever you're at, begin to pray, begin to start thanking God in your own words, in your own way. Yeah. 
God, may your kingdom come. May your will be done in my heart, in my mind, in this church, in this city, in this world, in this earth. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Because you are great, you're holy, and you're amazing. And God, everything can be stripped away. And if we have you, we have what we need. And today, that's our heart's cry. And we want to go back to the basics. We want to go back to what you have for us. So today, God, we come with open hands, open hearts, and open minds. May you have your way today. And if you agree with that this morning and online, will you say amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, as I already mentioned, we're starting a brand new series called Essentials. And as I was thinking about today and as I was thinking about this series, as I was thinking about 2021, anyone excited we're in a brand new year? (laughs) Yes, please, Lord. We aren't looking behind. But as I was thinking about 2020, I was thinking about going back to the basics. I was thinking about the essentials to life and, and, a lot, and actually where my mind wa- went was, uh, what are the essentials? What are those basic things that we can't survive with? And I, I automatically went to oxygen. I thought about the air that we breathe, right? If, if that doesn't exist two minutes later, right? We're, we're struggling, right? Y'all know what I'm saying? Uh, anybody like me, you go on vacation. Anybody need a vacation here, by the way? You go on vacation, you go into the pool and you see and you count to see how long you can stay underneath the water. I mean, just for fun. I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm a geek. Thank you. And see that hand, join me uh, on vacation this year. So, uh, uh, for, some, you know, for most, if not all of us, if two minutes without air, we struggle. Uh, I think about water, right? 
uh, about two days after uh, not having any water, we would begin to struggle. Uh, for those that have not eaten for an extended period of time, or maybe you've been deprived of nutrition two months after not having much or any food, we would be struggling or not existent. And those are some of those basic essentials that we need for life. And I think one of the essentials that a lot of us don't really think about, you know, and when we really break it down to that base level of essential is relationships. I think we we know air and water and food. Yes, duh, Andy, why did you have to bring that up today? You know, you're not very impressed with my science lesson today. Um, But relationships, if we don't have relationships, healthy relationships around us, we will struggle. Recently, Christy and I have been watching this show, or we did watch this show called Alone. Anybody watch the show? It's a reality TV show where they put these experts out into the wilderness to see how long they can survive on the basics, right? On the essentials. And so what you find is these trained individuals, right away what they look for are those essentials. They're looking for water, they're looking for a food source, and they're looking for shelter, The fun part of the show is they're by themselves and there is no possibility that they're going to come in contact with the other contestants. And what you see is you see people who are absolutely able to survive and thrive on the essentials, but the thing that cripples them and actually helps them raise the white flag is the lack of relationship. So let us not forget in 2021 that a major part of why we come together, why we love our online community and try to stay, why we try to stay connected with the greater Echo family is relationships are essential. Let us not forget about that. And what I want to do is kind of break down some of those basic physical uh, essentials and I kind of want to mirror them. I'm not kind, I do. I want to mirror them to the spiritual essentials. And so today I just want to break down what I think are the four spiritual needs that we all have, regardless of where we are in our faith or lack thereof. And the very first spiritual need that we have is for us to hear God speak to us. If you're anything like me when you, were, when you were young, and maybe even where you're at today, when I was young, I'd hear pastors say, man, God spoke to me, and I, I got envious of them, and I didn't really understand how that was happening and why that was happening for them, and it wasn't necessarily happening to me. I would hear from time to time stories of pastors or other people, other Christians, maybe sharing a testimony or their story, talking about how they had heard God, and maybe for some of them it was audible, and I was like, that's not fair. (laughs) You know, like, why is that? But as I grew and I matured, I began to understand when people began to say God is speaking to them, typically it's through the avenue of God's word. And as I have grown accustomed to seeking God and and to apply practical uh, learning and leaning in and devotional uh, tactics or, um, that's not the word I'm looking for, uh, tools, what happens is I've grown to begin as I feel God and understand that God is speaking to me in unique manners through his word and sometimes outside sources. The second thing that I think is absolutely essential when it comes to our spiritual, uh, spirituality and the need is the second is for God to hear us. We all desire to hear God and, and, and sense that, transcend, uh, that transcendent uh, relationship with God that we want God to speak to us. We, we want God to direct us. The second thing, though, is we want God to hear us. Come on. And we see that in scripture over and over as the psalmist and and the other writers begin to to really show this honest display on where they are with their faith and their trust with God. Sometimes it was really bad. It was really, really hard for them. And that's what I love prayer about. I love prayer for that reason. The third concept and spiritual need, I believe, and that I feel like this is something that we just experienced and why it's so good to enter into the presence of God through worship and adoration. And, and it's because we want God to be with us. We want to be with God. We want to encounter the presence of God. 
And the last spiritual need that we all want is for God to work in and through us. And I just want to make this one little thought really clear. I believe the biggest change spiritually happens between the third and the fourth. The first and second are absolutely essential. But the third and fourth are where most heart change happens, where most mind change happens. And, and, and I believe it's because of a rhythmic type of approach into the presence of God. And then when we enter into that space, it could be at your home, it could be at church, right? It could be in your space with God. You know, the old terminology is your prayer closet. You know, where, you, know you got to be around the church, the Pentecostal church for many, many years to say that. Uh, but that's where God makes most changes happen. That's, it's simple presence of God. Now, again, guess what happens in the presence of God? You hear God. You get to speak to God. But God is doing something as you're sitting at the table with him. Can I hear an amen? Y'all getting my drift here? So today what I want to do really quickly is, is, is kind of talk about uh, God's word. I want to mirror air, oxygen, as something that completely reflects and mirrors God speaking to us. And I think sometimes we look at God's word as, as um, a good idea. That it would be a really good habit to create in our life. And sometimes it stops there. And, and, and I want to tell you and show you why biblically. And so this is how the story goes. In John 1, uh, 1 you hear uh, John writes, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the word was God, and he was with God from the beginning. This is John's attempt to have his listeners catch a few words that would push them back to the beginning narratives of Scripture, their Scriptures, the Jewish Torah, the beginning of Genesis. So he, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was to have us as listeners push ourselves back to Genesis and read that narrative and see what the bigger story is when it comes to the Word. In Genesis 1, you know the story. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So when John says, in the beginning was the word, he is trying to add upon Genesis that says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And if you follow the narrative, you follow the story, the next thing that happens is this. God says something, and then something is created. God says, let there be light, and light was created. God said, let there be night and day. Night and day was created. God said, let man and woman be created. And what was created? Man and woman. Now, what you need to hear and see in this narrative is right from the onset, and it doesn't stop to, in Jesus' day, and it has not stopped to, to this day, is in, from the beginning, there has been a conflict with God's word. And that's what the enemy wants to attack right away. And so Genesis 3.3, 3, we read that the serpent entered the garden and the very first thing he said was, did God really say? Are you tracking? Are you following what I'm trying to say? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And God said, let there be light, let there be this, let there be that. And it was created. And then the enemy comes into our world, God's world, and the thing that he wants to derail and discredit right from the beginning is God's word. That's the biggest challenge we have in 2021. I can just tell you. It's whether we're going to live at God's word or we're going to make our own word. And what we see Adam and Eve do, they actually bite, they bite into what he's saying. And say, well, yeah, actually, maybe God didn't say it like that. And so I'm going to do what you're challenging me 
to do. Now, I I just want to say it like this. If you want a creative work in 2021 to be done in your life, then lean into the creator's word. If you want that creative work within you that we, we want to take a step forward, we all want to take a step forward in 2021, I guarantee. We don't want to take a step back this year. We already did that, right? We want to take a step forward. And, and what I'm trying to tell you today is this. If you want that creative work to come into existence within your life and your spiritual walk, then guess what? You need to apply the creator's word. So since the beginning, we've battled an alternative message. Did God really say? This is what that alternative message is. Number one, it's the discrediting of the power and the truth of God's word. Some of the things that without even thinking we can start believing, we can start believing that this book is a fable, that this book is just a number of stories that the content within it is unrelatable to our context, that this is out of date and it is hard to understand. This is the message that comes in right away in Genesis 3. And in 2021, I'm just wondering who's going to have the louder voice in our life. What is going to have the loudest voice? Are we going to allow God to have a voice in our life? Are we going to allow another medium or another voice to be louder? And I want to continue down this road a little bit. So John 1 says, in the beginning, right, the word was with God. The word was God. And then Genesis says, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And he said this, and that was created. And then the, the, the devil, right, Satan, whatever you want to call him, comes into the scene and says, oh, but did God really say? And Adam and Eve fail, right? And if you're a little kid in here, I remember hearing that message and, and, and thinking like, I wouldn't have done that. If I was in a perfect world, I wouldn't have screwed that up. Yeah, you would have. You have. You did it today, probably. But then I want to go back to Jesus in the beginning of his ministry. In Matthew 3, we read, or Matthew 4, chapter 3, says, The tempter came to Jesus, and he said something to Jesus. He said, If you are the Son of God, this is in his temptation. This is when temptation moment. This is when Jesus has been in the desert for 40 days or in the wilderness for 40 days without eating. And the enemy comes into his situation and says, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And on the onset, I think we can read that and go, okay, well, yeah, he's challenging Jesus to turn this bread in, or the stone into bread. I want to suggest that really what he's saying to Jesus is this, if you are who you say you are, or you are who God says you are, then go ahead and do something miraculous. Make it happen. If you're God, then do it. And what the power of what I want to show you, what Jesus does, is what I want to do in 2021. I want you to do in 2021. He responds to the challenge of the derailment, right, and the discrediting of of God's word. And Jesus answers back in scripture and puts it back in context. And Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the Father's mouth the mouth of God. I'm telling you what, there has been a time in your life that the enemy has come to you, the tempter has come to you, he's suggested an idea to you, and guess what? You bit, you bit hook, line, and sinker, and you justified what you did because it felt good. And in 2021, I just want to go back to the basics and say, you know what? If we need something, let's need God's word. If we're going to find direction and guidance, then let's lean into what God's word says. See, the alternative, second alternative message that the enemy brings is this, that that God's word, and we see this in Jesus' story, that God's word is optional, it's not optimal. It's so easy to live our life that way. 
that we don't need it. We can make it another day. We, we don't really need to lean in. We don't need the, ref- we don't, we, we can just find other things that will feed our desires and our needs. And I'm telling you, but those four spiritual needs, that concept of God speaking to us, I'm telling you what, on a daily basis, you are looking for something to speak to you. You are looking for direction. It's so funny. As I just said that, I was thinking about your See at the Pole video last week, Isaiah. Can we hear it for Isaiah? Lord, give me direction to the left or to the right. He's getting married here soon, so let's come on. Give Isaiah direction. The alternative message, I don't know how I get away from this part either, so it's, I feel your pain from last week. I was editing your video, that's why. I, <laughs> anyway, uh, opt- optional versus optimal. We convince that we can do this life alone. We can figure out it on our own. I, I think this optional versus optimal is we begin to believe the lie that this book is full of ideals that are unreachable. And we don't believe that this is and could be a real, realistic, life-changing content that could be applied to our life. See, today I just want to convince you once again that God's word is as air to our, our lungs. And my question to you today is, are we actually going to live in 2021 as if we believe this? One more scripture, and then we're going to respond this morning. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, we read a book, the context, and really, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the author is trying to direct and trying to guide followers of Jesus in the right direction, and he's presenting all of these issues that the modern day church or that, that day church is experiencing. And, and then he continues about some of those things that are kind of showing itself within that church uh, and locally. And, and then he eventually comes to, to this and he says in verse 14, continue in what you have learned and have become, and have come conv- and have become convinced of. Because you know those from whom you have learned. So he's saying, remember what you have been taught through God's word, through the life of Jesus. And then he says this, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So we have to let you know a little bit about the context of that day and and really the moment in those early years of Jesus' birth and his earlier days. We don't read much about it, but if you go ahead and study the history around how young Jewish boys and girls would grow up in their educational system, you would find that from zero to five, their one task was to memorize the Shema, which was a prayer that said, I believe that God alone is our only God. And from five to 10, they would go into school and their whole goal was to memorize the Torah, the first five books of our Bible. Can you imagine that? (laughs) Teachers? from five to 10 to memorize that and also some Psalms. And then from 11 to 13, you gotta memorize the rest. And if you did that, you would move on and you would enter into the synagogue. And we read that about Jesus. The age of 12, he walks into the synagogue, then to the temple, and they're doing the teaching like they do daily there. And Jesus steps up and guess what? He impresses everybody. You know why? Because that's what he grew up in. He grew up in a society that looked at God's word as if it was air, oxygen to their lungs. 
And I'll tell you what, we don't. We just don't. We live in a society that looks at God's word as optional instead of optimal. And it's overwhelming to understand that from the age of zero to 30, Jesus was in a teaching opportunity into a daily regimen to step into God's word as if it mattered to him. And then at the age of 30, he's baptized and he ends it, goes into the wilderness. And then when he's tempted, he passes the test. When I found out about all this <laughs> years ago, about the study methods of really the first century Jew and their faith, I was like, I will never live up to that standard. That is overwhelming. I don't know if I could do that. I started having a conversation with God about that one because I'm like, man, really, do we even have hope here in the 21st century? And the thing that was placed on my heart was this. It's not about what you don't know. It's about what you're committed to know. And today I'm just asking, I'm, I'm calling you out, 2021. Can today, as I mentioned in 15 days of change, could this be the first day of the rest of your life where you become a lifetime person to lean into God's word? And say, yes, some of this seems idealistic. Some of this seems unrealistic. Some stories actually sound like fables. But regardless of how I feel, I'm going to breathe in the word of God as if it is optimal for my life. Can we do that? That requires a response. Can we do that? <laughs> Insert awkward laugh. It's a challenging message. I don't want to tell you how to do it. I don't want to tell you where to do it. I don't want to tell you when to do it. I just want to tell you this. It has changed my life. Jesus, today, we lean into you. And as your scripture says, first, 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is God breathed. Today we inhale. God, you promise, promise us that it's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness that we might be servants of you and that we would be equipped to do good work. Today, God, we lean into that first necessity and that's you speaking to us. God, may this be a day, may this be a moment where you speak to us for the rest of our life. In Jesus' name, everybody said you stand up and take a moment and respond and worship and listen for God's voice. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the of yourself Do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling Oh come to the
young Jewish kids were coming to school for the first day, what they would do is they would put honey on their hands or they would put honey on a piece of paper or, or give them honey as a reminder that not only is the word essential, but it is sweet to your lips. There is power in Jesus' word. There is power in God's word. And, and I wanna tell you something else. When Jesus goes to the synagogue, which happened daily, one of the things that happened is people talked through their faith. Faith is never meant to be walked alone, ever. And one of the most interesting things about it is, I don't believe that you can get to know scripture on your own. I just don't think that's how it works. I don't think God created us that way. When God said he created humanity in his image, the intention is that you bring and you bring and you bring and you bring your part to the table. And I don't think we can do it without each other. So here's what we do every week at Echo. We say a prayer. And I want you to know this prayer is not magical. God loves you right now whether you say this prayer or not. Good, God could not, could not love you more than he does at this very minute, whether this prayer is said, is said or not. But he wants you to come on the journey. When we read about the word, when we talk about these essentials, it's because God is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He is not, like one of my favorite things is you never read about anybody who arrived in the Bible. They were all working their way through. And God is wanting to work his way with you. He wants to just pull you along on the journey. He wants to be a part. He wants to walk alongside, sometimes carry you on the journey. And so let's do this. Let's say this prayer like we do every week. And let's just take this as an opportunity to surrender maybe for the first time, maybe the first time in a long time, or maybe something we did just a few days ago. Let's say this together. Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions than answers, but I choose to follow you anyway. I acknowledge that you lived, you died, and you rose again, all with us in mind. Accept the rescue that you offer. Save me and lead me in Jesus' name and his authority. Amen. Let's celebrate some people that maybe said that today for the first time. We're in this together. If I've learned anything over the last 12 months, it's that not only are we in this together, but man, we need to be in this together.